Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking lipless crankbaits for fall bass. The lipless crank is such a popular springtime bait, but if you know how to adapt it, make some subtle little changes, it's an incredible bait in the fall as well. Bass are up chasing bait fish, the lipless crank is a natural option. You can catch a ton of fish, you can catch some big bass throwing that crank. The lipless crank is so much fun. As bass school up, you can use it to trigger a reaction, meaning you get one fish to go, it triggers the next one, the next one, the next one. You can fire up an entire school of fish. Just catch them one after another. Catch them two at a time. It's incredible just how aggressive bass will get when you use something with all that sound and vibration to set them off. So we're gonna take this from the ground up. I'm going to assume you know nothing about your own lake as far as color selection, but we're gonna keep it really simple. I'm only going to give you three baits. We're going to talk four colors, and then I'm gonna give you three different tips, things that you can do to modify your baits that will make a huge difference. All in all, this is gonna be a quicker video than most of what we do. So three baits. Six cents. And I'm gonna link these down in the video description for you. But the Sixth Sense, that Jackal, and that Lucky Craft. That's it. Now there are tons and tons and tons of great baits out there, but today we're talking about keeping it simple. That LV500, that Lucky Craft, that's my do everything bait. If my fish are down deeper, especially if I'm hopping bottom. You guys have seen us talk about that a lot, where we throw it out, let it go to bottom, and we pull. Reel up the slack. Almost like jig fishing or worm fishing, that is the bait for the job. It works so well. It works year round, but boy does it work in the fall. Then on straight retrieve, actual fishing, just going down the bank, chucking and winding. If my fish are down a little bit deeper, that jackal, that's that TN70, the jackal is an amazing option. It's got a really unique sound profile. It's sort of in the middle. It's not too high pitch. It's not too dull. The bait sinks well. It stays down well. Phenomenal option. CC did so much damage with the TN70 when we were on Chickamauga. It was crazy. I was having a hard time even getting bit on an LV. She was one after another after another. Those little nuances can make a big difference. And then the last one, that sixth sense. This guy if I'm fishing shallower. So if I'm fishing, you know, zero to five foot, I'm here. If I'm fishing five to 12 foot, five to 15, something like that, I'm here. And if I'm fishing deeper than that, I'm always throwing that LV. Or even if I'm in a foot of water, if I'm bottom fishing, if I'm slow fishing, that LV. It's that simple. Three baits that I have a ton of confidence in for fall. Color-wise, I'm not even going to give you the specific colors. Well, in the video description I will. I'll give you my exact four choices. But essentially what they are, it's this easy. A ghost color, so a really natural color. Something see-through. Something bold. Something white, chartreuse shad. Something reflective, shiny and something craw. Those four colors, those three baits, I could go anywhere and catch them. You can go anywhere and catch them. Now, the reason why I said we're working from the ground up is because you may already know, just from previous experience, that the fish in your lake love natural colored baits. They love those ghost colors. Well, then your job got even easier. One color, maybe throw in a craw color just for fun. The value of a craw color is that if you get fish, if they're on craw, obviously throw craw, but if they're eating bait fish, but you get a school fired up and they're just going crazy, throwing in a bright red craw can just take them to like a whole nother level. They just get even angrier and the big ones just come out of the woodwork and go crazy. So I'll carry a bright red craw. Something like this guy. 
on the middle of a shad bite simply for when I get the fish really revved up to try and get that giant bite to get that bigger fish that's even more fired up. Quick tip for you. And that's an extra tip because that's not what I was planning on talking about. So, four general colors, three baits. Now for the quick tips. Tip number one is hooks. You need to change your hooks. If you are using round bend hooks, so if your hooks curve straight back up on a lipless crankbait, you are losing fish, period. You need tipped in points. We use a handful of different ones, but like the six cents come with these bigger, heavier EWG style hooks, perfect. On the LV500s or the Jackals, I change them out. I either use the Gamakatsu EWG, which is that tipped in, or if I think I'm gonna be around bigger fish, I use that Owner 3X, also tipped in, but a heavier wire. So the Gamakatsu, lighter wire, owner, heavier wire, both work dynamite. If you have tipped in points, you will land way more of your lipless fish. It always fascinates me. You get these guys that are like, I never change hooks. My hooks are fine. It doesn't matter. You're crazy for even going through all that. And then in a different conversation, the lipless comes up and they're like, I don't throw lipless. You lose all those fish. Lipless are terrible. And you're like, you're the guy that doesn't change hooks. That's why it's terrible. If you put on tipped in points, your hookup to land ratio will go through the roof. It really works. Another quick tip. I talked to you guys about those VMC bladed hooks in a review video. No, oh, I don't know, a week or two ago. That's that hook there. Curved point, a little bit tipped in, and it's got that blade. And I mentioned you could fish that on a lipless. Well, that actually wasn't random. See, the LV500 that we like so much, for a very brief time, they made one that had a blade on it. It came on the market and off the market in like a blink of an eye. By the time we decided we liked them, they were gone. Some days you couldn't catch a fish on them. Other days it seemed to make a huge difference. So it's always good to have both so you can see if that's the bite. Well. That was why I said you could put this on because now you could take a regular bait and put that blade on it. It's just a tiny little bit of flash. That's all it is. It's just that little something, but it's different. And sometimes around bait fish, that little bit of flash is night and day. That is the deal. So let's see, we got changing our hooks. We got the bladed hook. Number three is that red hook. Now people get all funny about red hooks and we're not even gonna go down that road, but I'm telling you, if your lipless fish come up and jump and come off, try a red front hook. What it does is it changes how they eat the bait. When they come in to hit it, they're just looking for a target, right? They're looking for the, the weak point to hit. And I think they see that red and they go straight for it. Because you'll find, you'll be out there lipless fishing and you'll have all your fish hooked on that back hook. And they come up thrashing and that bait comes out. Put that red hook in there and all of a sudden you've got them hooked up with one hook in each corner of the mouth and you've got a good hook in them and they can't get it out it makes a huge difference they don't offer red in that owner but they do in the gamakatsu and it makes a big difference so we got hooks where else oh last thing i want to talk to you about last tip because really we're keeping it that simple today you can get away with just that handful of stuff but with my lipless boxes, I mean, I'm, I brought lips, lipless today. It could be complicated. We could go way down the rabbit hole. Well, with those boxes, I keep this box. Blade baits. It is fall. The water is cooling down. Depending on where you are in the country, you may be on the front end or the back end of that curve, but the water is cooling. You know that come winter time, they will eat that blade. That Damiki, that Jackal Keyburn we just talked about. That blade bite is coming. I'm gonna tell you from experience, that blade bite, the silver buddies, that blade bite comes sooner than people realize. Sometimes, especially if you're bottom hopping, when that bite really gets going, 
if you've got that cooler water already, like if you're in the north half of the country and that water's cooling down and you can get on that lipless bite, but you can't catch them burning anymore, but you can catch them hopping, there's already a blade bait bite. So if you're out there in a tournament and on day one you're sticking them, and on day two it's kind of falling apart, don't be afraid to switch over, throw on a blade. Check out this one too, that's one of the key burns. That one doesn't really show up in the pictures online. It looks so stinking good. A little bit of chartreuse, a little bit of silver. I like that color. But anyway, I, I get caught up with that stuff. Just as a quick tip, if you're on lipless fish, don't be afraid, afraid to try out the blade. You just don't know when that thing will be firing off. You don't wanna find out in January that it's wide open and you could have been doing it two months ago. So guys, I hope that helps. It's a really fun time of year to get out there and throw that lipless. You can catch a lot of fish, you can catch giant fish, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Just a few baits. And if you already know your fish are shallow, well, you can eliminate one right out the gate. If you know your fish are deep, you only need one. And then color, again, once you get your color dialed in for your lake, it's really, really easy. But you really only need those four styles. Down in the video description, I'll link the baits, my specific colors for each one of those categories, my favorite colors, and then the hooks and different things as well as the blade baits. Rods matter a ton. Tim and I are super specific on the rod that we use. We use that 845 CBR, uh, and that is how we're able to land so many giant fish because the entire rod loads up and it's really hard for them to shake it out. They come up and thrash, and the rod doesn't unload. They're still there in the bulk of that rod, flexing, absorbing their head shakes. Makes it a lot harder for them to throw it. Rod makes such a difference. Um, and they make a budget-friendly version of that 845. I'll link that for you too. But when it comes down to lipless, if you're going all in, you need a dedicated lipless rod because it is so different. It gets such big bites. And if you're not prepared, you can lose those fish. But if it's just something you do from time to time, any soft rod will do. You can even do it on like a true budget rod because those, you know, 30, 40, $50 rods tend to be super parabolic and really load up. And it's essentially that same concept. So sometimes those really inexpensive rods will work well for it and it'll keep those fish pinned like a high end rod will. Uh, you just don't have as much sensitivity. So again, rod does make a big difference. If you're really getting into lipless, it's worth investing in a rod. But if it's just something you do here and there, don't even worry about it. Just throw it on the softest, most parabolic, the bulk of that rod loads up that you have and you'll be just fine. Guys, I hope this helps you. Just some quick tips for you today. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.